The search continues for the suspects who beat a man after he drove his truck onto a sidewalk, nearly hitting several people. The driver, Melguen Lopez Santos, died apparently from that beating. He drove his car onto the sidewalk. Almost hit a bunch of people. I mean, think about it. You're walking down the sidewalk. And, I mean, a huge truck comes barreling towards you. The fear of God. I mean, just think about people that may have not been able to get out of the way. Kids. Elderly. People with, you know, issues. Mobility issues. I mean, didn't he kind of bring this on himself? And when they find these suspects, I want to know what the legal, what can be done legally for these people, man, because this seems like attempted murder, what he did. And if he's attempted to murder them, then what they did, even though it's after the initial attempt, but I would like to know that if pulling him from the vehicle, because as long as he's behind that wheel, he's still a danger. The search continues for the suspects who beat a man after he drove his truck onto a sidewalk, nearly hitting several people. The driver, Melguen Lopez. Santos died, apparently, from that beating. Family and friends of Santos are holding a vigil for him tonight. They're also making a plea to Hawthorne City officials. Ed Lasko's live for us in Hawthorne with the details. Ed. And that vigil is going on even as we're talking at this point. Candles being lit at the very spot where all of this happened very early Saturday morning here on the sidewalk. Rosecrans and Hawthorne, the crosses. Relatives are here, family members, and a lot of friends of the man who was pulled from that pickup truck. I did his 40-year-old Melquin Santos. He was allegedly beaten to death by a group of men from a nearby bar after Santos is driving his pickup truck on the sidewalk. It's almost comical that the guy who's doing the story has a make this guy seem like some victim like all the while explaining what he did <laughs> like this is this is really this guy's doing an honorable job man the gymnastics he's doing on the scene of the vigil <laughs> they've given him the victim narrative script <laughs> but he's <laughs> The facts, though, you still got to come. Man, wow. Morning here on the sidewalk, Rosecrans and Hawthorne, the crosses. Relatives are here, family members, and a lot of friends of the man who was pulled from that pickup truck. I did his 40 year old Melquin Santos. He was allegedly beaten to death by a group of men from a nearby bar after Santos is driving his pickup truck on the sidewalk. A lot of tears here, and this is a security video that shows Santos and his white pickup truck driving down the sidewalk moments after he's asked to leave that bar. Never, and I mean never, tell a own Brito <laughs> that they gotta leave somewhere and then stay. Okay? You can tell them that they have to leave. And then when they leave, then you leave. They go that way, then you leave out the back door. But never tell them to leave and then stay. Okay? <laughs> I told you that about Sunman. And the reason I say it about Sunman is because it's it's almost like a 50% chance that something bad will happen. On Britos, I mean, I'm 6,000 videos in. It probably depends on how many beverages they've had that night, but it's probably about a 25% chance that they're going to come back and throw their lives away. Um, but that's still a high percentage. Even though that's not as high as Sunman, it's still very high. So you don't ever want to do that. You know, even though it's 25%.
you don't want to, you know, take those chances. Those are still bad odds. Security video that shows Santos in his white pickup truck driving down the sidewalk moments after he's asked to leave that bar. Witnesses say he gets in the pickup truck and he drives down the sidewalk. He stops. And at some point he begins to drive forward. He hits uh, the next building over a liquor store. The vehicle comes to an end there. And then you see a group of about four men come around, open the driver's side door, pull Santos out. And that's where the beating takes place as the investigation is now on. Family members, though, say this is a case of murder. This is not about vigilante justice. They should have just held down Santos, they're saying, until police arrived a few minutes later. And they're calling it murder. They want some answers. Listen. What do y'all think about that? The family said they should have just took the guy out the car and held him down. He gets to be emotional about being put out of the club to the point where he drives his car on the sidewalk, not caring who he hits. Obviously trying to hit people in front of the club. But they don't get to show any emotions by putting them paws on it. Like, I mean, I just don't get it, man. I mean, I know that these people are probably going to go to jail. They're probably going to get, you know, even though in California they don't prosecute criminals, these are the type of criminals that get prosecuted nowadays. And this is the sad thing. The thugs, the hoodlums, the gangbangers, the carjackers, the burglars, they don't get charged. Their cases get dismissed and thrown out. These people, though, they'll get charged. It won't get thrown out. It'll be seen all the way to the end. They'll be sentenced, and they'll be put in a jail cell. This is what pasty liberals and sisters have given us with this criminal justice reform crap. People like this don't fall under criminal justice reform. Because remember, I tell you guys all the time, and it's what many of you guys know what I'm about to say, criminal justice reform only benefits one group. Criminals. These people were probably just people that were at the bar, saw their life flash in front of their face, see the, the truck backing up towards them, they go grab the guy out the truck, and then he's most likely, if he did this, when they grab him out of the truck, he's not just like, oh, take me. Oh, he's not a damsel in distress. He's probably fighting like a wild banshee. So now it's mutual combat against him and a group of people he just tried to kill. But criminal justice reform is not for them. It's only for the guy who's brakes in your car, the guy who cuts off your Cadillac converter, catalytic converter, the guy who carjacks you, the guy who sprays willy-nilly into a crowd and hits you even though you had nothing to do with it. These type of people, they don't fall under that because they're not criminals. Because it was never intended. All this criminal justice reform was never intended to benefit these people. Takes place as the investigation is now on. Family members, though, say this is a case of murder. This is not about vigilante justice. They should have just held down Santos, they're saying, until police arrived a few minutes later. And they're calling it murder. They want some answers. Listen to the sister-in-law. All we want is answers. We want to know what happened. We want justice. Because what happened to my brother, he did not deserve that. It shouldn't have went that far. Why did they have to keep on stopping on him like that? It's not fair. What if it was somebody in your family? Now live, the family very emotional, as you can imagine, but also stressing they do not condone in any way Santos on the sidewalk driving down. But the sister-in-law pointing out she does not feel that Santos was trying to hit anybody. The family's take on it is that Santos was trying to escape whatever happened in the bar, and he was trying to get away, and he wasn't able to. And then the group that he had an altercation with earlier came back and pulled him from the vehicle. Who oh. believes that? <laughs> he got kicked out of the bar, most likely by the bouncers. He's trying to get away from the scene. The only route 
So he goes to his truck. The only route that he can escape is back down the sidewalk in front of the club. Oh, my God. I guess they saw what happened with the Texas shooter, the little son teen that sh shot up the classroom, and then the family said he was the victim of bullying and all this BS. <laughs> and I think that <laughs> families are starting to be like, they taking their cue from son people. They're like, all right, well, <laughs> if it worked for them, we let's come up with a story. That that bullying story with the 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 the, the plug, <laughs> the dude was the plug for the he had he had all the weed and all the guns and all the drugs, he was a big time dealer, and he was flashy and had all the clothes and all the tennis shoes and all the cars. <laughs> he was getting bullied. <laughs> Cause he lost the fight really bad. So, yeah, <laughs> if that worked for them, I guess, you know, this this family's like, look, we, we was fleeing in the scene of a, of a bouncing, <laughs> fleeing the scene of a bouncing, and the only way you could get away was to drive down the sidewalk in front of the club. Which resulted in him only getting a few feet before crashing into a building because the sidewalk ain't wide enough for a car to go down. <laughs> but that's just a, you know, <laughs> that's just a meaningless detail. The fact that, you know, sidewalk. Not made for trucks, cars, let alone trucks. And there would be no way he could have gotten away from whatever danger it was taking that route. <laughs> Just go with it and hope the liberal media um, identifies with you in the Twitter mob. Wants to make you their next <laughs> poster child. Because you're a POC. But the sister-in-law pointing out she does not feel that Santos was trying to hit anybody. The family's take on it is that Santos was trying to escape whatever happened in the bar. And he was trying to get away. And he wasn't able to. And then the group that he had an altercation with earlier came back and pulled him from the vehicle. All of this, though, yeah, under investigation by authorities. And they are saying at this point they have four possible suspects. Four prime suspects, they're saying. But no arrests have been made yet. This investigation wide open. For now, we are live here in Hawthorne. Back to both of you. Yes, that's exactly right, Christine. Not only does the family want justice, but they also want answers. Answers as to what happened inside the sports bar that forced the victim to leave. Moments later, he's up on the sidewalk driving. Then he's pulled out of his pickup truck by a group of men, beaten by that group of men, supposedly from the bar itself. All that leads to this very emotional vigil. Look here. Hugs and tears to go along with all the candles at the very spot where it happened. Relatives are calling this a murder. Instead of stopping it, holding my brother down until the police came. Why couldn't that be done? Why did they have to keep on stopping on him like that? It's not fair. She's talking about the attack on 40-year-old Mel Jen Santos. He's driving his white pickup truck here up on the sidewalk in front of the sports bar where he just had an altercation and was asked to leave moments earlier. The pickup crashes into a wall, and that's when a group of men open the driver's side door, pulling Santos out and down to the ground where the beating goes on for more than a minute. Shame on you guys. Shame on you guys. You guys didn't have to do that. Leave him alone. He's drunk. That's what you, you know? He's drunk. Leave him alone. Let him go. It wasn't your job. It wasn't your job to do what you did. This is why liberal communities are so trash and so violent and so just non-livable. It wasn't their job. Well, they were making a citizen's arrest. And in the mid commission of that citizen's arrest, the drunk guy was fighting, so they were fighting back. 
the drunk guy who just tried to run them over with a truck. So, it was their job. They want to take everybody's guns. They want to take the police away. And now, they want to make it illegal to pull a drunk guy from a truck who just tried to kill you by running you over on the sidewalk they want to make it illegal to pull him out of that truck and give him a good beating like he deserves. It's like absolute lawlessness is like what they, they're after. And this woman right here, she does not need to be in a lawless place. She needs structure and order to ensure her safety and the safety of her kids. She wouldn't function well in anarchy. She's smaller. She has less bone density. She has less muscle mass. If there were no rules and everything was could go and she'd have to be attached to a really strong group of people to ensure her safety. And at this point, you already have that in the structure of the United States. So why are you trying to get rid of it and then have some anarchy where you got to be part of a clan, a roving clan of nomadic warriors and so that the other roving clans of nomadic warriors don't come and take you and kidnap you and do whatever with you. It's amazing that women are for this lawlessness. Like I always talk about sisters. It's just amazing. They, do they, has, has America, have we, has America made things so comfortable that women are, are forgotten? Like the jungle, the law, the jungle? Shame on you guys. Shame on you guys. You guys didn't have to do that. Leave him alone. He's drunk. That's what you, you know? He's drunk. Leave him alone. Let him go. It wasn't your job. It wasn't your job to do what you did. Santos now being remembered as a family man with four children. His 14-year-old still can't believe his father is gone. I want the police to catch the person that... My dad. Relatives say Santos worked as a security guard, trying to keep others safe. That's why they just don't think he was trying to hurt anybody, even though he's driving on the sidewalk. They feel he was just trying to escape his attackers. Of course. He's a good man, and I can guarantee you he was definitely not trying to run anyone over on this sidewalk. That's for sure. Relatives calling this attack vigilante justice, saying instead of beating Santos, that group of men should have held Santos until police arrived. This is wrong. You know, just call the police. Call the police. Let them handle it. Don't take actions into your own hands. For now, investigators trying to find the men in this video responsible for the beating that's left an entire family suffering. My nephew last night at 3 in the morning texted me and told me he couldn't sleep. Do you think that's fair? It's not. Now live, detectives saying this is still very much a wide open investigation, saying they have been interviewing a lot of people, as they put it, from the bar, identifying four prime suspects as they're identifying their suspects, prime suspects. But at this point, they're still gathering evidence. No arrest yet tonight. For now, we are live here in Hawthorne. Back to both of you.